Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy. Brave Alistair is here. In today's session, we're going to be looking at the fetal skull diameters. Now, we should have already done a particular video that talks about the fetal skull in totality, looking at the various bones that comprises of the fetal skull and some of the important landmarks on the fetal skull. Now, in order for us to understand the fetal skull diameters, I have a little diagram here that is going to be our aid for this particular session of fetal skull diameters. Now, as we look at fetal skull diameters, it is important also to make mention that fetal skull diameters can be divided into two. That is, we have what we refer to as the transverse diameters, and then we also have what we refer to as diagonal diameters. Now, let's quickly look at what transverse diameters are. So from the transverse uh, diameters, you have number one, you have what we call the biparietal diameter. Okay. So the biparietal diameter is just from bi meaning two, meaning from one parietal bone to another parietal bone, the transverse diameter there, the biparietal diameter is about 9.5 centimeters. This is the diameter from one parietal eminence to another parietal eminence, it's about 9.5 centimeters. And from the biparietal diameter, you also have a diameter that you can measure from one temporal bone around this region to another temporal bone on the other side, and that is referred to as the bitemporal diameter. Okay, and this one measures something between 8 to about 8.2 centimeters. Then you also have a third type of a diameter which you can measure from just right behind the ear from one mastoid bone to another mastoid bone, and you can call it the bimastoid Tem, um, a diameter by mastoid a diameter and this one measures about 7.5 centimeters so these are the three transverse diameters that you're going to uh, um, find on the uh, fetal skull or that will be of importance for you uh, as you look at the fetal skull diameters so you can remember these as mtp which is just mastoid temporal and then parietal and so those three mark or give us the transverse diameters now let's quickly look at some of those diagonal diameters can get rid of these as well and then we look at the diagonal diameter so now we are looking at the diagonal diameters as we look at diagonal diameters we can start from the posterior aspect which is the occiput and we have already looked at the various parts of the fetal skull now if you haven't uh, looked at that particular video you can also find it on my youtube channel which is brain shakers academy i have done a full video on the fetal skull itself so that you can find it easy to understand the diameters because we'll just be looking at the diameters themselves. Now let's quickly look at them starting with the occiput. So from the occiput or from the occipital bone to the frontal aspect we have a diameter that we call the occipital frontal diameter. So we are moving from the uh, prominence or the occipital prominence to the prominence of the frontal bone and we have a diameter here and we're going to call this diameter the occipital frontal diameter or the OF so we have one diameter here which we'll call the occipital frontal diameter now the occipital frontal diameter is about 11.5 centimeters okay it's about 11.5 centimeters and then just below the occipital uh, prominence then you have the sub area here so we can have another diameter from the sub part which we're going to call the sub occipital frontal diameter okay so we had occipital frontal now we have sub occipital frontal diameter so this one will be called the suboccipital frontal diameter so we're going to write suboccipital sub 
suboccipital frontal diameter. Now, the occipital frontal diameter was about 11.5 centimeters, meaning that we were coming from a parietal prominence or from the furthest part of the occipital bone. But now, because we have come in a little bit, the suboccipital frontal diameter is going to measure about 10.5 centimeters. So there's a reduction of at least about a centimeter or so. So this will measure about 10.5 uh, centimeters. Okay, now whilst we are still on the occipital part, we have another diameter that we can uh, move from the suboccipital region to the anterior fontanel, which we call the bregma. So that diameter is going to be called the suboccipital bregmatic diameter. So we're going to move in that order like that. Okay. So since we have already looked at these other diameters, if I do this so that this doesn't confuse you, we can do this. Okay, so we have another diameter here. So this is the suboccipital region, remember, and we have the anterior fontanel that we called the bregma. So this one is going to be called the SOB or the suboccipital bregmatic diameter. Now, the suboccipital bregmatic diameter is a very important diameter, especially in obstetrics, because this is the most favorable diameter, and you want this part to be the leading part when the baby is being delivered so that labor then progresses well and you minimize the um, the extent of tears as well. So you have the suboccipital bregmatic diameter. Now the suboccipital bregmatic diameter is about 9.5 centimeters. So it is a small diameter and because of the size of the diameter you would want uh, the presenting part to actually come in and distend your perineum having uh, engaged with that particular diameter. Now, we have looked at the diameters from the occipital end. Now, let's come to the mentum uh, part here where we can have also some uh, diameters or diagonal diameters from this end. Now, if we are moving from the mentum to the highest part of the parietal bone, then in, we are going to have a diameter that we call, remember we called this part the vertex. So we're going to have a diameter from the mentum to the vertex, which we are going to call the mental vertical diameter. So we have a diameter that is coming like that to the highest part, which is the vertex here from the mentum. Now, this uh, diameter here is the longest diameter on the fetal skull. So this is called the MV or the mental vertical diameter. So you have the mental vertical diameter. Now the mental vertical diameter measures anything between 13.5 other literature will tell you 13.75 to about 14 centimeters. Okay, so that is the mental vertical diameter from the highest part of the mentum, which is the chin, to the highest part of the parietal bones, which is the vertex. Now, since we have the mentum here, we have the sub mentum, which is a little groove here that is a reduction or causing a reduction in the diameters. Now, from the submental region, we can have another diameter, which we are going to refer to as the submental bregmatic diameter. So again, we'll have another diameter that is going to the bregma region or going to the anterior fontanel. So this is going to give us the sub mental pragmatic or the SMB. So we have number five here. We have the sub mental pragmatic diameter. Now the sub mental pragmatic diameter is about 9.5 centimeters. It's 9.5 centimeters and also makes sure that if the baby or the presenting part or the fetus is coming with its a face presentation, then that face is going to obviously deliver as a face uh, presentation. It will still go ahead and deliver. Why? Because the sub mental pragmatic diameter is uh, 9. 
1.5 centimeters and this will also be a, uh, a favorable uh, diameter for the process of uh, delivery. Now since we have looked at the submental uh, pragmatic diameter while we're still here on the mentum part we can have another diameter which we are going to call the submental vertical okay so we are moving from the sub mental region to the highest portion which is the vertex so we are going to come back again with another diagonal diameter from the sub mentum here to the vertex and we are going to call this the sub mental vertical diameter now the sub mental vertical diameter is going to allow or facilitate the presentation of what we call a brow presentation or usually the scene support is the one that is going to come into play. Usually this, the mental vertical is what will give you a brow presentation that will not culminate into a safe delivery. But when you have a submental vertical diameter as your engaging diameter, there are higher chances that what is then going to present into the cavity is going to be the mental vertical, thereby complicating the process of labor. So what we're going to have here as number six is the submental so we have the submental vertical diameter okay now the submental vertical diameter is about 11.5 centimeters okay it's about 11.5 centimeters so all these diameters all these diagonal diameters they play key role even as you care for a woman that is in labor or as you're looking at the process of labor and delivery because they have a high um impact on the outcome of the laboring process as well that is coupled with the understanding of the pelvic diameters so these will help you to understand also what to look out for uh, depending on what you find as the presenting uh, position once you have the understanding of the various positions or landmarks of the fetal skull then you know what you feel as you're doing that vaginal examination and it will tell you um, what presenting diameter or what diameter is presenting and from the understanding of these diameters together with the pelvic uh, diameters that is of the bream the cavity and the outlet then you have a clear understanding on whether that labor is going to continue and culminate into a safe delivery or not so these are the fetal skull diameters the transverse and the diagonal diameters now if you found this particular video interesting and helpful in understanding the fetal skull diameters do not hesitate to give me those a thumbs up please kindly share the video as much as possible and don't forget to drop me a comments in the comments section. I would like to hear what you think and also kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Brain Shakers Academy. And as always, thank you so much for coming through and for watching and I will see you in the next one.